I do not like how running works in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. Hey, whoa, look, I know. I can't just go around bashing beloved mechanics like running in Breath of the Wild and Tears of the Kingdom. So let's back up a bit. In both of the open world Zelda adventures, Link's standard movement speed is brisk. You know, pretty low impact for a guy with a lot of important stuff to do, which is where running comes in. Hold down that button and the hero bursts into a sprint for a second until he sprains his hamstring and needs to walk it off. This is because just like climbing and swimming and gliding and a few other things, running in these games is connected to an upgradable stamina wheel. Wheel facts. You increase the wheel size by completing sets of four shrine puzzles, though you have to choose between upgrading stamina or health each time. Also, for some reason, you can't max out both in either game. There aren't enough shrines for that, so... So that sucks. Anyway, running quickly eats into your wheel and your wheel automatically refills once you stop. But like I said earlier, if you run long enough to let the wheel fully drain, you're forced to dramatically slow down for a bit. Also, there are a few outfits that slightly increase overall speed as well as consumables that immediately replenish the wheel and or add temporary yellow chunks of little wheel on top of the big wheel. And I don't like any of it, except for the word wheel. I do like saying wheel, <laughs> wheel. Wheel! Let me be clear, I do like the stamina wheel overall. I think it's important for potentially game-breaking mechanics like climbing to be restricted, and it's satisfying when the game gradually eases those restrictions as a reward for completing shrines. Also, it just looks nice. Yes, I've seen that video from YouTuber Afterthoughts, which breaks down the ingenuity of the wheel from a UI perspective, which I highly recommend watching if you haven't. The wheel is great, is my point. We here at Dianti love wheels and circles and sectors and such, but we don't love when they're attached to mechanics arbitrarily. Here's what I mean. Restrictions on climbing and gliding are not arbitrary. If if the player could do either of those infinitely, it would negate pretty much all of the explorative challenge that these games are designed around. The same is true for swimming, batteries and tears of the kingdom, or even little things like taming horses. All of these functions pretty much have to be limited, because if they weren't, it would be significantly easier to get around and across obstacles right from the start. And if that were the case, the games would suffer in a variety of ways. The early game experience would be doled out, there would be less of that classic getting stronger as you play feeling that we all know and love, entire systems and mechanics would be trivialized if Link's most OP abilities were limitless, etc, etc. But running? Running in these games isn't even that fast. It's faster than walking, but that isn't saying much. It's still slower than horseback riding or pretty much any decent vehicle. In Tears especially, with its three-story version of Hyrule, running is even less important in terms of traversal options. And this is all without mentioning the hover bike that we all eventually built, or obviously fast traveling, which is by far the quickest way around these maps. Simply put, though running in these Zelda games has no chance of breaking or trivializing anything, so sticking it to the stamina wheel feels like nothing more than restriction for restriction's sake. So why did they restrict it, I wonder? Well, Nintendo clearly put a ton of thought into everything in these games, it all feels super deliberate. But I'll be honest, I just can't understand why they'd bother limiting a slow running speed in such a massive world with so many better ways to get around. Just spitballing here, but maybe they thought it would feel inconsistent to limit some but not all of Link's more cardio intense abilities? But I don't really buy that. It's not like every mechanic in the game is 100% real world accurate, and in real life scaling mountains is much more taxing on the body than sprinting, but the former burns through less stamina than the latter. Maybe since running was already attached to stamina and Skyward Sword, it just kinda kind of stayed that way, I guess. Honestly, even if the decision made total sense from like a lore perspective or whatever, I still wouldn't like how running feels in these games, so it doesn't really matter to me anyway. Personally, I avoid running at all half the time since I hate those moments where I accidentally empty out the wheel and have to sit and watch Link huff and puff. It's a little thing, but irritating every time it happens. And I know there's a little trick in Breath of the Wild where you can tap the whistle button or something to run infinitely, but while that's a fine way around the problem, this video is about the intended game design, not the unintended ways that players learn to cheese through it. It, so, eh. What would my ideal solution be here, you might ask? Well, let's look at one of my favorite games for inspiration, that being Metal Gear Solid V, The Phantom Pain. Just like the Zeldas, this is an open world game that radically alters core mechanics of its long-running series, starring a character that first appeared in Super Smash Bros. Brawl for the Wii. What are the odds? And this is how running works in that game. You press on the run button and Snake runs. Ah, look at him go. In MGSV, running just feels good to me. Snake is a big heavy guy carrying a bunch of stuff. So when he sprints, the world shakes all around him as if he's generating little earthquakes with each step. And that's without the uniforms that make him go even faster. But despite how quick and useful the running is, there's still other ways to get around, like jeeps and tanks and mechs, which are all fun and useful since they have their own unique advantages. You know, the mechs can be upgraded with various weapons, the tanks are slow, but they're tanks, which is cool, and the jeeps can transport all the humans that you kidnap throughout the game. Oh, and if you don't get what that last part means, you should really 
really play MGSV if you can, it's a lot of fun. So the way I see it, MGSV demonstrates that infinite running in an open world can be really fun and impactful all on its own. And it can be done without oversimplifying exploration or negating other ways to get around. And that is what I wish the Zeldas did. If Nintendo really needed to attach sprinting to the stamina wheel and breath tiers, they should have either made sprinting significantly faster or allowed the player to do it for longer chunks of time. That way you could actually travel around the map without having to let go of the run button every 14 seconds. Mm. But again, I insist that the mechanic shouldn't be stamina based at all, simply because it's pure fun to run around in an open world. And restricting that annoys me personally. So therefore, it is objectively bad. <laughs> but I'm curious, does anybody agree with me here? at all. Obviously this isn't a big deal and these games are fantastic regardless, but if you do agree, please like and subscribe so I know. And if you disagree, oh buddy, you better like and subscribe even harder. <laughs> Believe me, that'll teach me a lesson. <laughs> Alright, goodbye.